Jesus doesn't save you, the Bible does. This is going to be an extremely important study going through multiple scriptures to show you that your proof of salvation is written, it's written down. The importance of having a perfect standard that is written in writing, in other words. Uh, this house that I'm in right now, I can claim ownership of this, but if I can't have a deed, a title deed, uh, it means nothing. I can't go and say, that, hey, that place over there across the road or this property down there, that's actually mine. They say, where's the proof? Well, I don't have it in writing, but I feel, I believe that it's, it's mine. Uh, no, that doesn't work. You need to have a perfect written standard. And uh, there's a lot of people out there that claim to be Christians, and yet they don't believe in a perfect written standard. That's a problem. That's a big problem. Let's start out in 1 Peter chapter 1. People say, I, I just want to make it all about Jesus, all about Jesus. Uh, we, don't, we don't need this book. This book isn't some kind of special thing, you know. You can prefer one version over another. You can use anything you want, prefer the Bible. You can correct the, any Bible, any translation. No translations can be inspired. They can all be changed and clarified with the Greek, other satanic things like that that people say. Um, I just want to make it about Jesus. You wouldn't know Jesus if it wasn't for this book. And if you don't believe this... If you say, this is not perfect, but I believe Jesus is perfect, you're a lying hypocrite. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, we'll begin there. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, but by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You say, the word of God is Jesus Christ. He's the manifest word. Well, if you could actually read your King James Bible here, it says, word of God, lowercase w. This is not one of the references like John chapter 1, verse 1. That's a reference to Jesus, the manifest word. This is the written word right here. It's a lowercase w. You say, well, that's just your interpretation. Let's keep reading. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. I am preaching unto you right now. According to the gospel, it's written, it's written scripture. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Matthew chapter 24, Jesus Christ spoke that. The written word of God is a book that you can hold in your hands. And God doesn't have to have it in every single language, every single dialect, every single tongue. That's nonsense. Again, all the philosophical arguments of the higher textual criticism world out there. The modern professing Christian world. They're a bunch of lost people is what they are. Oh, God has to have it. If the King James Bible is God's perfect word in English, then what is it in German? What is it in French? What is it in Spanish? What is it in this? Well, what was the Bible in the Old Testament times? I think that would have been Hebrew. What about the New Testament? Greek. And they say, well, there's some Aramaic stuff, whatever. But the whole point is God didn't put his word into every single language all throughout time. The vast majority of time, God says, that's the language I'm going to choose. Now, I'm a radical nut. I realize that to most people. But my belief is Old Testament was Hebrew, New Testament's Greek, and the whole complete Bible is English. King James Bible. This book is unlike any other book that's ever been written. And that I can prove that scientifically. The most published book in the history of man, right here, this King James Bible, this blessed, beloved book. No book ever written like this book. No book that's uh, done more for people. If you're saved, you understand the place that this book has to be in your life. It's an amazing book. And yet there's a lot of people out there that think that they can call themselves Christians and yet reject this book. Well, I used the King James Bible for a while, but not anymore. Now I've gone back to my new versions. I've, since I've been going to a different church now, they use new versions there. And so I didn't want to look foolish with that old King James Bible. So I'm going to start using the new version now, again. Because it doesn't matter. There's There will be people in heaven that use other versions. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You know, I just... 
sometimes the these and the thous and the beholdeth and everything else, that gets confusing. And I just would like to have one in more modern, updated English. What if it's not God's word? Oh, they're all God's word. Oh, they're all God's word. They're all perfect, but they contradict each other. Well, yes, God's perfect word does contradict each other. It can be available in hundreds of different versions. None of them are inspired, but they're all God's perfect word. Well, how is it God's perfect word? Well, because I said it is. My beliefs dictate truth. That's a lot of people that think that way. But our text says here, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You're born again by a book. Faith in what this book says. I mean, I'll just say it this way. Pardon me, sir, if you died today, do you know for sure where you would go? Uh, no, I've often wondered about that. Well, there's a, a place called the Big Rock Candy Mountain, and in order to get there, you have to believe in Herman. Okay, um, what's your proof? Well, that's just my beliefs. You want to go to the Big Rock Candy Mountain, don't you? Herman will save you. He'll take you to the Big Rock Candy Mountain. Okay. Hey, um, Jesus Christ will take you to heaven. What's your proof? Well, honestly, I don't really have any proof because no Bible is truly inspired, no Bible's without error and whatever else. So pretty much just my opinion. Then how would I be different than the guy that says he believes in Herman taking you to the Big Rock Candy Mountain? You see what I'm saying? Without the Bible, without the scriptures, it's my opinion versus your opinion. That's all it is. I mean, when I got saved, I was using an NIV. And I heard the truth that they took out verses. And you know what I thought? Honestly, before God, I can say this in all honesty and sincerity. I thought my NIV was word perfect. Because I believed it was God's word. As a lost man, professing Christian churchgoer or whatever else, I thought my NIV was the perfect written word of God. And when I was shown that there were errors in it, I said, okay, that can't be God's word. What is it? King James Bible. Oh, whenever I started to read the King James Bible and examine the King James Bible and look different things up and scripture to scripture with this, and I thought, this is it. Studied manuscript evidence, I realized that 99% of extant Greek manuscripts line up with the Textus Receptus, which underlies the King James Bible. This is it. Look down through the centuries at how mighty things God did with this King James Bible and the supposed contradictions. And I look and I think, that's not a contradiction. It's clearly defined over this way and over there. This is God's book. I've tested it. I've proved it for years and years and years. You'll never get this book from me. You'll never take this book from me. There will never come a point in time when I will lay down my King James Bible and take up some stinking, disgusting, filthy version from the Vatican. You say, oh, now you just, just, okay, let's, let's calm down. Let's do. They come from the Vatican. The Nestle's text is made under the supervision of the Vatican. I've showed it in my videos. Real Bible version issue exposed on my secondary channel. I proved it. Been proven. I mean, not in the two oldest and best manuscripts. This verse is not based on the two oldest and best manuscripts. What are they? Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. Vatican manuscript. Codex B. If you want to get into the whole thing there. Codex Aleph, Codex B. Codex B that removes the entire Book of Revelation. Read the last couple verses there in the book of Revelation. See what that gets you. Taking away from the book of this prophecy. Get your part taken out of the book of life. Well, how about a manuscript that's put out by the Vatican that removes the entire book of Revelation? Not just the words. A word here and there. The whole book. And that's the better, older manuscript that your new versions rely on. That your new versions say, well, we have to just kind of come out with these better, newer, more up-to-date, uh, more scholarly readings. Oh, oh, the same ones that were there in uh, 1610 in the Dewey Reims Bible that the Catholic Church put out by the Jesuit order. You mean those readings? Again, which I've proven? 
This is God's book. And if you don't believe in God's book, you're not saved. Oh, I, but I believe in Jesus. Let's make it about Jesus. Let's make the main thing the main thing. Methodist Church used to say that that I went to in the past. Um, let's make the main thing the main thing. It's about the gospel. It's about Jesus. Who's Jesus? <laughs> they always do this lispy thing. Who's Jesus? Well, and they start saying things from the Bible, and then you say, oh, do you believe in the Bible? They say, well, not really. <laughs> There's going to be an awful lot of people who are shocked, absolutely blown away someday when they stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus says, depart from me, ye cursed. I never knew you. Well, no, I believe in you. I, I trusted in you. You didn't believe my book that I gave you. Do you realize how many people had to suffer and die so we could have this King James Bible in our hands? <laughs> but you can reject the King James Bible and you're still going to heaven. No, you're not. No, you're not. John chapter 12. You know, it, it shocks me that anybody even argues about the Bible version issue anymore. Some guy uses an NIV or New American Standard, Legacy Standard Bible, newest one. Shut them off. Don't even waste time with them. I mean, why would you even take your, them seriously? Just blows my mind. Luke chapter 12, verse 44 through 50. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me see him that sent me. Okay, there's only one God, all right? There's not this Trinity satanic garbage. Trinity's not in your King James Bible for a reason. Uh, God doesn't want to be called by a girl's name. But uh, if you're seeing Jesus Christ, you're seeing God. God the Father is the soul of Jesus Christ. It's one God. It's one person. That's what the King James Bible teaches. And all these satanic philosophers out there, they say, God in three persons. There's no such scripture that says that. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, no scripture for that. None. It's plain when you really are saved and you understand it and you believe in a book. You know, well, it, I believe in the King James Bible, but the King James Bible occasionally needs to be clarified with the Greek and Hebrew. You're a devil. I mean, think about this for a minute. I'm standing here. I'll move off to the side. The Lord manifests himself right here. And I say, uh, to my viewers, I'd like to hear you, have you hear the Lord, God Almighty. I mean, I'd be flat on my face, but just to try to prove a point here. Here's God. He's standing here, and he starts to speak. And he says, um, a year from now, I'm going to be, there's going to, World War III is going to start July the 4th of this year. And, and I say, uh, uh, excuse me, God, just one minute. Just to clarify what he said there, are you kidding me? How could I do that? He's standing there, God manifests in the flesh. He appears and he's standing there and I say, oh, oh, oh. I have to clarify what he said because he didn't say it clear enough. What kind of an arrogant jerk would I be to do that? Talk about having no fear of God. And yet there are people who call themselves King James, Bible-believing types of people, and they will say, occasionally you have to clarify this book. And then they'll turn around and call it God's word blows my mind. I've never understood that. If it's God's word, then you leave it alone. You read it and you quote it and you say, well, the one verse doesn't line up exactly with what I'd like to teach. Then change your feelings, change your beliefs because they're not in line with scripture. You never come along and say, well, okay, this verse could be clearer with it. Just, oh, blows my mind. Let's continue. Verse 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Wait a second. If you hear this book, the Lord's saying, I'm not going to judge you. Who is it then that judges? Verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. You see, let me just explain a little thing of a court legal proceeding here. I'm out on the street. Some guy walks up to me and he says, I'm going to kill you. And I say, oh, really? 
911, get the police here. The police show up and I say, this guy just said he's going to kill me. And he says, I never said anything of the kind. So, okay, let's take this thing to court. I stand up and the, and, the, and the judge says, do you have any witnesses, Mr. Denlinger? I say, yeah, me. He said he's going to kill me. They say, uh, Mr. Defendant here, you stand up. He stands up and he says, I never said it. Well, sorry, there's just no evidence. There's no recording. There's no anything else. Uh, no, case dismissed. Sorry. But what if he walks up to me and he sends me, he hands me a note that says, I'm going to kill you. Hands me a note. It's signed, it's notarized, whatever else. Now I have something I can use in court. You see? Judgment. I have something that can be used in court. You have something that can be used in court. If you believe this blessed book, if you have a copy of the Word of God, you can judge people righteously by opening to the book and saying, you know, the Bible says, well, the Bible says, the Bible says. Well, my Jesus wouldn't say that. My Jesus wouldn't be so judgmental and harsh like you. Your Jesus there, Jesus of the Bible, says, I'm not going to judge you. I have a book, written words, the words that I've spoken. These same words are going to judge you in the last day. Do you line up with the Bible? Well, I don't really care what the Bible says because my Jesus is... Wicked, wicked people. Verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak, the soul speaking through the flesh, the body. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Jesus didn't come down and give his appealings and feelings and preferences and whatever else. He came down and said, okay, these words are very important. You four guys, you write this stuff down. I want four witnesses to what I say. You write it down. And I'm going to preserve that book. And I'm going to bring that book out someday and it'll be the greatest book ever written. You can hold a copy of it in your hands. King James Bible. You see NIV? Are you kidding me? Use it if you run out of toilet paper. Okay, it's a Vatican version. It's garbage. Well, New American Standard Bible, it's, it's the most accurate but most accurate. It's not even the most accurate. Too, by the way, that's a marketing lie. Just to explain something to you, the New American Standard Version, they tout that it's the best translation of the two oldest and best manuscripts, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, but yet it's not because Sinaiticus and Vaticanus both put deuterocanonical books in, apocryphal books in as part of the inspired text, and they also remove a lot of things from the scriptures with which the New American Standard puts in, like Codex B, the Vaticanus manuscript, takes out the entire book of Revelation, and yet they put it in the New American Standard Bible. How could it be the most accurate then to the two oldest and best manuscripts? They're lying to you. They're liars. Next, let's go to John chapter 8. You need to be connected to this book in some way, shape, or form. I mean, you might be able to understand the basics of salvation and whatever else, understand that Jesus died on the cross for you or whatever. Uh, sure, you can get a little wordless book or whatever, the little collar. This is the red page for his blood. This is the black one for death and, and sin and whatever else. And there's the gold one for heaven and, you know, green one for peace and whatever. I understand that stuff. You can do, do the little gospel message and things, but you need to be connected to this book. You can't just deny this book and say, well, I'm, I'm a Christian. Uh, no, you're not. John chapter 8, verse 43. Speaking to lost people. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Now think about what he's saying there. Think about the English there of Jesus Christ. Uh, let, me, let me clarify. Okay, uh, You cannot hear my word. They'd say, well, I just heard more than one word. Why would you say singular word? That doesn't make any sense. It should be, you're not hearing my words, my speech. Uh, that would be true if that's what Jesus was speaking about, just his regular words. But he's talking about his word, the word of God. That's what he's talking about in context there. 
Um, so you can't say, well, um, I, I believe in you know some of the, the things that Jesus did in his deeds and whatever and his nice things and or do you re accept or reject his word? And funny too, it's a singular ref singular reference. Hebrew, Old Testament, Greek, New Testament, English for the entire Bible. Hmm. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no, no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. you got to love that verse there too, that part of the... Verse 44, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. It's of his own mind. The prophets prophesy lies in my name. The Lord talks about back in the Old Testament. They're prophesying lies and saying, God showed me this and God told me that. And God's saying, no, I didn't say any of that stuff. It's them. They're speaking a lie. They're speaking of their own intellect, their own feelings. Just like the vast majority of these preachers do out there. The vast majority of them, when they say the Word of God says, the Bible says, they are not talking about the book that they hold in their hands. God's perfect Word, when you pin these devils down, a James White or guys or John MacArthur or these types of satanic devils, you know what? They don't believe in any book on this earth being God's perfect Word. Ask them. Ask them. Hold up a copy of God's perfect Word that cannot be questioned, that cannot be attacked or changed or clarified or anything else, hold it up. Let us see it. Tell us where we can get a copy of it. They'll never do it. Ever. When they speak a lie, they speak of their own self. Because their father is Satan. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Well, my Jesus, um, do you have a book? Pardon me, sir, are you saved? If you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? Oh, oh my, yes. Yes, I, I believe in Jesus. I believe he died on the cross and paid for my sins and he shed his blood and they go through all the whole thing. Do you believe the King James Bible is perfect? Mm, no, no, oh, my no. Oh, no, I don't want to be part of that whole King James only thing. That stuff is just divisive. And Okay, then what's your standard? What's your standard of truth? Well, um, the, the New American Standard Version. Is it God's perfect word? Without error, can't be changed. Well, you know, it would have to be the Greek and the Hebrew. Oh, really? Um, the Greek, what do you mean? The Nestle's text? Well, yes. Okay, which one of the 28, 28 uh, versions of the, or, or revisions and things, editions is the word I was looking for. Which one of the 28 editions is God's perfect word? Well, there's a sense in which the work of translation is never wholly complete. One of the new versions actually says that in the preface. I think it's the NIV. Um, okay, so then what's the perfect standard? Well, you see, um, the original autographs, okay? Have you ever seen one? No. Um, they're in heaven. See, the Bible says, they go back to the Bible to prove that there is no Bible today on the earth. That, um, the Bible says that the, the word of God is settled in heaven. Forever thy word is settled in heaven. So that means when the, when the original autograph was, was there, it was written by the hand of Paul or Peter or John or James or whoever, and it's, it's written and they write it and they go and put the period at the end and, and a couple people look at it and maybe try to make a copy. And then it's, I guess maybe as soon as they make one copy, then it goes, whoosh, the Lord says, come up hither. And up it goes. In a moment, the twinkling of an eye, the old original autograph goes to heaven. And it's settled there. And God has a glass case where he can just walk by and look at the words that were written. And he's, wow, that's so neat. I, you know, Well, the people down there on the earth, I, that's right, I said I was going to judge them by the standard, but I... <laughs> just do your best. Do your best down there, children. Go ahead, do your best. If you believe in Jesus or you believe in Herman or, or you know, Fred or, or Wilma or, or whoever, you know, just do your best, you know. 
They worship a God that took thousands of years to inspire a book and then he loses it. But they're Christians. They're Christians. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. They're saved. You can count on that. Yeah. Romans chapter 10. Oh, you Denlinger thinks that he's the only one that's saved. He's he's caught like he's he's leading people into this exclusivist caught type of thing where where not many people are saved. Uh, yeah, almost like what Jesus said when he said the the way which leadeth unto life is is narrow and few there be that find it. You know, and the way which leadeth unto des destruction is broad and many there be which go in there at. You know, kind of like that. Romans chapter ten verse sixteen and seventeen. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, like most people. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Do you have the word of God? Well, um, you see, uh, what if technically somebody didn't have the King James Bible, but yet they had faith in the new version that they used, and the new version that they used was a was a perversion of the King James Bible, but they had some wording the same. And what if their cousin's uncle's brother-in-law's roommate had a King James Bible that they once heard a word from it and they thought or you could just simply say, hey, you know what? If you're going to some Babel building someplace and the guy's up there using a new version, and you're sitting under his preaching, you're lost. Well, I believe in Jesus. Do, okay, do you believe the, what the guy's preaching up there? His new versionism and everything else? Well, yes. I don't think we should make a, a division over Bible versions. You're lost. You're lost. You're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You're not connected to the book. You're lost. <laughs> Why is that so difficult? Uh, sir, I, I'm sorry, I had to pull you over there. License and registration, please. I don't have any registration. This is my vehicle. Okay, I need to see some paperwork, sir, here. Um, you have no registration. No. Do you have a license? No, I don't. I feel that this is mine, and I feel I have a right to drive on the road. Oh, okay, well, as long as you feel, uh, go on about your way, sir. People are crazy. They're absolutely insane. That wouldn't be acceptable to drive around a vehicle that you have no title for, you have no registration, you have no insurance, you have no, you're forced to have insurance, you have no driver's license, you have nothing like that, but you feel it's your, that's bad, but you can say you feel that you're saved, you believe in a Jesus, but you don't believe in a Bible. How's that work? Well, Psalm 138. Well, I just think, I understand what you're saying there, Brian, but, you, you know, you really need to be careful that you don't put the Bible in the too high of a position. Don't be a bibliolater. Don't have a paper pope, Brian. You have to be careful. Just be careful. You're not worshiping that book, Brian. You don't, just be careful. Really? Psalm 138, verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. I'll keep doing this throughout this study. This is above me. This book is above me. It's not below me. I'm not going to say that this book, oh, I can correct this book. It's sometimes, it's cute and it's nice and it's sweet. But I have to clarify it sometimes. And, the, you know, the, this is a problem here. And it, this should be better translated over here. Um, I'm preaching this study uh, mainly to put fear into people. I want you to be afraid. I want you to be very afraid. Because if you don't hold this book in the proper regard, um, you're not saved. You're not saved. Just as simple as that. It's like the multitudes that follow Jesus and they're, Hosanna to the Son of David. Crucify Him! Crucify Him! Well, what happened? You like the show. You like the emotion. You like the feelings and everything else there. And Jesus is, here's the maimed guy to be whole and born blind you get to see. And here's Lazarus uh, come forth and he comes forth. And oh, wow, what a thrilling adventure. Until the 
religious leaders with all the connections and your proper burial site that you already paid for and your, you know, the church that you wanted to belong to. And, you, you know, we were married in this church and my grandparents were married in this church and, and my father taught Sunday school and, and, you know. And they said, I can't believe the King James Bible is God's perfect word because it's divisive. So therefore, I have to reject the King James Bible. You're playing with fire. And unfortunately, it's hellfire that you're playing with. If you think that you can get by saying you believe in Jesus, but yet you reject his word, he's going to judge you, but it won't be him. It'll be this book. This book's going to judge you. I mean, think about, again, the logic of this whole thing. God is a God of truth. There's faith there. Sure, absolutely. I can't see him. He's not here beside me. He's not standing right here. But you know what? Our God is not just some dumb bunny that just doesn't work with the laws of true science, not the science falsely so called. Our God is logical. He's rational. He makes sense. And the reason that there's so many atheists out there is because what is called Christianity is not logical. It's not rational. It's cuckoo. It's nonsense. They add all kinds of stuff to the scripture. Any atheist out there with an IQ of 10 or something could go out and they could say, I don't see anything about a church being a 501c3 corporation that's open to both saved and lost in here. I don't see anything called Trinity in here. I don't see anything about uh, going door-to-door -door soul winning and bus ministries and Sunday best and 10% 10, 10 of your tithe and come forward to the old-fashioned altar. And I... You know what? This book here, it doesn't make sense to me because those people don't make sense to me. That's why there's so many atheists. Um, but I just want to say this. Our God is a God of logic. A God that makes sense. Um, the Lord, I stand up there someday at the judgment seat of Christ. Most other people will be at the great white throne judgment. But he, I stand there and the Lord says, um, Hey Brian, uh, why did you mess around with this sin? Well, Lord, I didn't know that that was wrong. The Lord says, you have a King James Bible? Turn in your Bible to <laughs> Whatever. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. Hey, uh, Brian, did you, why did you have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness? Um, uh, and Lord says, oh, yeah, you had that verse highlighted right there in blue with the red around it. You had that verse highlighted there in your, Brian, or in, in your Bible there, Brian. Um, and you don't think I should judge you for what you did down there? It's making it up. I don't fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but it does say that, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. But what if I have no written standard? Is Jesus here beside me telling me what to do? See, without a written standard, I could kind of just go along and uh, pretend and make up my feelings as I go. My conscience doesn't convict me. Hey, you know, I, I can look at, oh, hey, baby, look at, look at her walking along. There's nobody out there. Again, trying to prove a point. Hey, what's wrong with looking? Well, the Bible says if you look with lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart with her. Oh. Um, you see what I'm trying to say? If you say you just believe in Jesus, but there's no perfect standard, well, then who's to judge? Who can really say what's right and wrong? My Jesus condemns certain sins, but your Jesus might not. You see why Jesus said, I'm not going to judge you. The words that I've spoken, uh, these words are going to judge you in the last days. Oh, God, I didn't know. Oh, please don't send me to hell. How was I supposed to know? How was I supposed to? The Lord says, uh, oh, let's see here. Um, you walked through that dollar store that one time. Weren't there King James Bible on the shelf? Well, yeah, but I just didn't. They were a dollar. Um, you went to that bookstore the one time. There were King James Bibles there. Remember that time you were in traffic and you were behind somebody and they had a King James Bible verse on the back of their 
vehicle and you wouldn't even look at it? What do you mean I don't have a right to judge you? I had it in writing. State police officer pulls over, pulls me over. Uh, get out of the vehicle, sir. Has his gun drawn. I get out of the vehicle. He says, put your hands over there on the vehicle. I go like this. He takes my hands, puts them back in the handcuffs. And he says, okay, could you just on over here? I'm going to sit you down the, the curb here. I need to search your vehicle. Searches the vehicle. He says, uh, oh, by the way, sir, what's your name? I said, oh, oh, Brian Nellinger. And he says, okay. He goes over and he's getting in the glove compartment. And he looks in there and he gets out the papers. John Jordan. Uh, hmm. Let me run the place here. Yeah, John Jordan. Uh-oh. Uh, Mr. Denlinger, um, what is written in this vehicle here has just condemned you. Well, no, sir. I no, this is my vehicle. It's my vehicle. I, you can believe me. You can trust me. I know for sure it's my vehicle. No, it isn't. Because what's written, it is written on the registration. It is written on the title. It is written in that wallet in there with the, the uh, license. It's written on the insurance card. It's written on the serial number. It is written, it is written, it is written, and you are condemned because you're a liar. Rational. Logical. Truth. You rejected me. You denied my word. Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire. I never knew you. But Lord, I did many wonderful works in thy name. Yeah, you did them in my name, but not according to my word. Sorry, you didn't make it. Do you realize how many billions with a B, how many billions and billions of people are going to go through that exact thing? Stand before him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Who are you? I don't know you. Um, you made fun of my word down there. You said a better translation would be. No translation can be inspired. You All the stuff. I don't know you. Sorry. Depart from me, ye cursed. Oh, the Bible version issue is something we shouldn't fight over, brother. I think if somebody uses a new version, as long as they believe in Jesus, um, that's okay. That's fine. Let's not divide over such small matters. It's not a small matter. It's not a small matter. This is God's book. Right here. This King James Bible. And all the little arguments that can come against it and all the, is it a 1611 or a 1769 and what about this thing here and this and that. They've all been answered. Okay? They've all been answered. And all these people. Any Anytime somebody comes up to you, let me just tell you this, Christian. Anytime that some guy comes up to you and says, well, I, I appreciate that you use the King James Bible, but I'm going to try to destroy your faith. Um, what about this? And what about that? And, um, you know, are you aware of the, of the fact that 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 is not in the oldest and best manuscripts? It was actually added later on in Scripture. It's part of the, the uh, conflation, a conflated text. You see, that's why there's other verses, Mark 9, 44, Mark 9, 46. They're all part of the conflated text. And, and we know from the most recent scholars, hey, shut up, you wicked devil. Let me ask you a question. Oh, okay, yes, what is it? Can you hold a perfect copy of God's book in your hand? Do you have access to a cop perfect copy of God's written word? Hold it up for me. Let me see it without error. Well, um, you see, uh, and then watch them sweat. There are no arguments that they can give you. They can attack and attack. Just, just you know what? I don't need to answer that stuff. Let, just hold up a perfect copy of God's word. You wicked hypocrite. It's so funny too because they'll actually hold up Bibles and they'll say it's the infallible and errant word of God and they don't believe it. If it's infallible, that means there's nothing 
fallacious. There's, not, there's no lies. There's no problems with it. If it's inerrant, that means there's no errors. It's infallible and inerrant, but I can show you errors and show you problems with it. And these people are going to heaven. Uh, no, they're not. So I just wanted to put that out there and um, watch out for any anybody out there. Uh, again, Eric John Phelps, um, I interviewed him years ago. Was, I was on YouTube. I took the interview down because the guy's a total flaming heretic. And he said that anybody that says the King James Bible is word perfect is a heretic. That's what he says. That's what he teaches. Um, and he says that it's it's God's word, but it needs to be clarified in certain places. He's lost. Okay? Um, I have no qualms about saying that. He's a ra radical militant Trinitarian too, so there's another big problem. But uh, watch out for anybody that puts this book down, this blessed book. So that is going to be it. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to all those out there that support the ministry. And uh, please do keep us in your prayers. Um, and we'll see you in the next study. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.